love this level. Similarly to last month's video, after completing the demo to Bioshock years ago and falling in love with its trailer, I was immediately hooked into Andrew Ryan's subaquatic utopia filled with drug abusers, Big Brother observance, and Art Deco aesthetics. It is also one of the most critically beloved games of its era, and one dissected numerous times on the internet because of its themes and how it displays them. It's a gorgeous game with a world incredibly engaging along with immediately enamoring, and a story filled with tough decisions and tandem with enough twists to make you question who you can really trust. Each stage within Rapture is filled with big daddies to hunt, areas to plunder, and a big boss to tackle. The design and pace of the game is just perfect, and on today's episode of I Love This Level, the segment where I break down my favorite levels within a game, I'm going to be breaking down not only my favorite section within Rapture to explore, but one that immediately hooked me upon first exploration 12 years ago. The detour turn circus act that is Fort Frolic. Now, Game Maker's Toolkit also did a video on this place years ago and does a brilliant dissection of not only the level itself, but why the level is fundamentally great along with why Sander Cohen is a great antagonist even after you leave Fort Frolic behind. I bring that up not only because I think it's a fantastic channel that does deep dives on mechanics well, but I might be referencing it and enhancing some things expressed in that video at points in this video because I agree with some of what he has to say about it. I love the shift in tone this level presents. This section has such an innocuous start, with Atlas still introducing you to it and giving his opinions on the leader of Fort Frolic, Alexander Cohen. However, once you make your way to the coveted bathysphere to Ryan, it's immediately stripped away and you see the first of many striking visuals. An ivory rabbit mask against a purple backdrop complete with Cirque du Soleil dancers. Your radio is hijacked by your host during your stay in Fort Frolic, the titular artist himself. The true star of Fort Frolic, as you are at his whim from this point on. And it's that immediate shift in tone and focus from the main quest that really drew me into this area on top of Sanders' truly pretentious and overdramatic performance. He is a character worth the love that's been thrust upon him in the fandom, and this level is his art. From the neon-clad signs that are as eye-catching as Cohen himself to the incredibly bizarre tasks he asks you to complete while you're there, the main goal being to complete his latest piece. Once you pass his initial test of fighting in a trap-filled room, he continues to wax poetic about society and how much he appreciates your abilities. He sees you as a sort of disciple, a protege if you will. Before you really get into the meat of this stage narratively, you're able to explore a bit and get a sample of what's behind Fort Frolic with some upgrades, shops, and some of Cohen's pieces on display, complete with voice logs that may or may not have been quoted in a certain yearbook, My Senior Year. All of this with minimal distraction. Once you reach the main hall, however, that's where the show really begins. You see a man named Fitzpatrick strapped to a piano covered in explosives, being forced to play it exactly how Cohen wants. He fails and it explodes. Cohen rambles on more about the importance of life and death and art and wants you to take a picture of his charred corpse. You'll need it anyway. That is the main goal of your stay in Cohen's art house, to help complete his masterpiece. With every picture placed on the fixture, you're rewarded. First with a new weapon, a crossbow, and you're given a chance to work with it as you continue to complete Cohen's photographic snuff show about betrayal and revenge. It's like a sadistic Pokemon snap. Wonderful. First, with Martin Finnegan, who traps you in the frozen Poseidon Plaza and tries to make you a part of his own ice-clad art installation. After you thaw him, you were close. Fort Frolic opens up a little more and you're able to make your way around some of the shops and do things you typically do in a new area in Bioshock. Hunt big daddies and loot the crap out of the area. More narrative threads are unraveled as well as you make your way to Eve's Garden, an area that may peel back more layers surrounding the mysterious protagonist you've been controlling this whole time, giving you possibly more ties to the world of Rapture than you may have known before. After leaving there, you also run into your next subject, Rodriguez, who you need to chase around the area you've been looting. Vigorous. Get the photo before it completely dries up. Oh. Sandra's madness is shown further as he, in a bout of rage, sends a fleet to slow dance with you in the dark before immediately shifting gears back and sending you off to your next task. It's one involving one of the best parts of the area, the plaster splicers. In Sinclair Spirits, you see so many of them, and if you use the gun upgrading station in there, which, why wouldn't you, they then scare you and follow you around the rest of the plaza, silently and almost randomly. They exist to keep you on edge and punish you if you continue to chase the riches within Fort Frolic. My biggest wish is that they were more prominent outside of this area, but this is really the only place where they shine. They are, hands down, one of the best enemies in the game. Within Rapture Records, however, you find your last target, 
Cobb, who seeks to outdo Cohen as an artist. And after you kill him, photo the corpse and complete his masterpiece. Perfect! You finally get to meet the artist himself. He comes down caked in makeup and ready to view his work that you did. Once you get your last reward and plunder his holdup spot, he sets you free with no hostility. However, now you're left with a dilemma. Do you simply leave? Or do you exact your own revenge on Cohen, getting more treasure locked away? If you choose to fight, he's not an easy boss, but if I were being honest, I'd wait to find him later on in the game. The reward is much greater anyhow. But it's a choice I'm glad the game gives you since it falls so in line with Cohen's character up to this point in the game. He never wanted to kill you, he just wanted to use you as another piece of a puzzle, and he's done with you and sends you off. Not really caring about your feelings whatsoever. Like I said up at the top, Bioshock is one of the best games ever made. It takes the ideas and atmosphere of a game like System Shock and throws it underwater with an art deco aesthetic. It has a really compelling story and one of the most immersive worlds in any game. The build-up to Steinman's fight in the medical pavilion is amazing. Fixing Arcadia is so much fun and the Andrew Ryan sequence is iconic. But there's something about how different and isolated Fort Frolic is in comparison to the rest of the game that makes it my favorite piece of it all. It's a detour that still retains a lot of the madness presented in Bioshock, but it's just weird and artful enough to sit in its own realm altogether. And that's going to conclude this episode of I love this level. What did you think of it? Do you like Bioshock? Do you like Fort Frolic? Is there a sequence that you like more from that game? Let me know in those comments down below. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you'd like to see more of my music gaming and general nerdery content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. If you would like to join their ranks, linked in the description is my Patreon. You get early access to content, exclusive content, and help drive the community. On screen now or a bunch of stuff for you to check out. Something I think you'll enjoy, something YouTube thinks you'll like, and the subscribe button and the playlist to this show in particular if you'd like to see more episodes of it. Click on one of those to continue your adventure, but I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so very much for watching. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day.